911. Do you have an emergency? Yes, we do. At what address? Person not responding. Okay, do you know if the person's breathing? No. Okay, you mean you don't know or they're not breathing? I don't think she's breathing. Paramedics rush to save the life of 30-year-old Barbara Weaver, an Amish woman who lives with her husband and five children on a quiet cul-de-sac in Apple Creek. Nothing appeared to be out of order. The bedroom was at the end of the hallway. As we walked in, we saw the patient laying in, in the bed. When we realized that it was a gunshot victim, there was no gun around, my mind went racing. What transpired? Where is the person who did this? Is my crew safe? The paramedics remove themselves from possible danger. Then do something they've never done before. Notify the Wayne County Sheriff's Office of a murder in Amish country. This was only the second murder in, among the Amish in 250 years in America. It just was unheard of. Next door neighbor, Mary Iker, one of the area's taxi drivers who takes the Apple Creek Amish where horse buggies can't go, comes home to find her block a crime scene. As I pulled up, I glanced back down the alley, and I saw three sheriff's cars. And I said, what on earth is going on back there? I mean, you just don't see that around here. And then someone said, Barbara was found with blood, and she's not responding at all anymore. Neighbors tell investigators that Barbara Weaver was about as perfect as a person could be. Everybody loved Barbara, everybody. I mean, she was sweet, she was uh, funny, she took care of her children, she kept a nice house. When the children would misbehave, she would just quietly tell them to behave now. And I don't remember ever hearing her raise her voice to them. Neighbors also describe her 29-year-old husband, Eli, as an outgoing guy who has an easy way with people. The first time I actually met Eli was when he came to the door and asked for a ride. He was very polite and considerate. He was sort of apologetic for interrupting me and saying, you know, can you take me somewhere? Is it too much trouble? He was the owner of Maysville Outfitters, a big fisherman, loved to go fishing, hunting, and then sold accessory items in his shop. If he was at home, he usually was in the store. If he was uh, not in the store, he was usually out fishing. In fact, Eli's next door neighbor tells detectives that very moment, Eli is an hour and a half away on Lake Erie. And being Amish, he doesn't carry a cell phone. To get in touch with him, Detectives call one of Eli's English fishing buddies and tell him Eli's wife was found unresponsive in her bed. They were going to take Eli to his house, and the sheriff mean said, no, you're not taking Eli home. You're coming here uh, to the sheriff's office, all of you. And they did. That's when police discover that life in Apple Creek can be a lot more interesting than anyone ever suspected. Detectives play it by the book. Chapter one says the victim's spouse is always the prime suspect. They ask Eli the last time he saw his wife alive. He told them that he was supposed to leave at three o'clock on a fishing trip with his friends, but he had overslept. Um, his friends knocked at the door. Barbara got up with him at that point and helped him get ready. And he left the residence around 3.15 that morning. Police ask Eli if there was any trouble in his marriage. He tells investigators that his wife was always faithful, but admits he can't say the same. This unassuming Amish man not only uses technology, but he keeps in touch by texting from his own personal cell phone. It was shocking for the detectives to find out that Eli had a cell phone since the Amish do not use cell phones. He says a year earlier, he had an affair with an English woman named Jessica. They had sexual relations in the shop. And on one occasion, they had engaged in sex behind the counter. Eli forgot to lock the door. An Amishman walked in, and the Amishman promised that he would not tell anyone. In reality, he did. 
The Amish men told the bishop. The bishop confronted Eli, and Eli was told he was not to have contact with Jessica again. In the Amish community, once you're married, uh, you're married for life until death doeth part. Uh, they take their vows very serious. He apologized to the bishop, apologized to his wife, and he was accepted back into the Amish community. But Eli's remorse didn't last long. He admits within a year, he started an affair with another local woman, 39-year-old Barb Raber. She's a married mother of three, a Mennonite lady, and she does taxi work the same as I do. And I gather that she likes to run around with other men. Barb Raber's almost full-time job was driving Eli. She was older than Eli by, I believe, eight years. She wasn't particularly pretty, and he was this Amish stud. It wasn't decent. It wasn't decent how much time they spent together. Raber admits to police that she and Eli recently developed a physical relationship, but insists it ended a few months ago. Barbara revealed that although Eli was not happy in his marriage with his wife, they always seemed to work things out. She also revealed that Eli had talked about harming his wife. She just laughed it off and thought that he was joking. Raber insists she knows nothing about Barbara Weaver's murder, and detectives can't hold her on suspicion alone. 36 hours after Barbara Weaver was shot point blank in the chest, Police have more questions than answers. Eight days after Barbara Weaver is found dead, the phone company releases the text messages from her husband Eli's cell phone. And what a story they have to tell. The text messages were shocking because they basically laid out how the murder took place, before, during, and after. Beginning on May 31st, Eli exchanges dozens of incriminating messages with the same number. As the hours edge closer to Barbara's murder, the messages become more pointed and deadly. Here's a guy who thought no more about blowing up his house with his children in him than what he's going to order for lunch the next day. Hours later, as the whole Amish community is learning the news of Barbara's untimely death, the only thing the unnamed texter can think about is covering their tracks. Then, the texting stops. The killer shuts the phones off, but it's not enough to hide what they've done or who they are. We were able to determine the phones belong to Barbara Raver. Barb Raver, the married, middle-aged taxi driver who told police she didn't take Eli seriously when he asked how he could kill his wife. Barbara and Eli did not know enough about technology to understand that by just getting rid of the phones, that did not get rid of the text messages that were stored by the carrier. Wayne County's Amish country is quiet, but now one of its own, 29-year-old Eli Weaver and his friend, 39-year-old Barbara Raber, stand accused of killing Weaver's wife as she slept in her bed. Wayne County investigators say Raber and Eli Weaver have been friends for a while, but would not elaborate more on their relationship. Well, we treated this as a homicide. Um, we 
We did not treat this as a religious affiliation or anything along that line. Um, a woman was killed, five children were left alone. And that's what uh, motivated us to bring this to a, hopefully a quick closure, at least the start of one. On September 22nd, 2009, Barb Raber is found guilty of aggravated murder in the death of Barbara Weaver. She is sentenced to 23 years to life. On September 29th, 2009, Eli Weaver is given 15 years to life for conspiracy to commit murder. He will be eligible for parole in 2024. Eli's biggest fear was being shunned, and guess what? He's now shunned for life. As far as Apple Creek, the community may never truly recover and most certainly will never forget. When your life is separate, you must think that it keeps you safe. This was a crime that was completely planned on cell phones. So it gives the Amish a good argument for why progress, technology can be evil. I think it will always be kind of line in the sand for the Amish that, see, we've been worrying about the outside world and we had good reason to worry. It confirmed for them that there's evil out there.